All right, what is up guys? VV back with another video. And uh, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. <clears throat> we're going to make a card. Uh, this will not be my traditional style video. And uh, I always try to preface these with, you know, don't expect this all the time. I really just w I had this on my mind. This is a, a character. I'm, we're going to be messing around making a character. Don't worry, we're going to go through all these slides. I'm just kind of giving you all a glimpse of, of, what to, of what to expect. My favorite character in One Piece is Rayleigh. Now, go figure, right? Uh, in, in a recent video, I've, I've talked about how I personally am a teacher. Like, that's my profession in real life, okay? That's what I do. I'm a teacher. So I guess it's natural for me to want to have this mentor uh, style, or, or, or I can relate most to the mentor style character. So, for example, like in Naruto, it's Jiraiya. In One Piece, it's Rayleigh. Um, what kind of got me into teaching years ago or, or what made me want to become a teacher, this might sound crazy to some people, but Harry Potter and that whole entire idea of like the, the professor who are these legit, hardcore, you know, spellcaster type uh, established wizards, they had such a, a, a like a, a, a large impact on their students that it was like I wanted to be able to have that kind of impact on, on like students as well in the field that I love, which, which, which is art. Um, so, so that mentor model really resonates with me. So in, like I said, in Naruto, it's Jiraiya for me. Shoot, even in, um, even in Dragon Ball, I like Master Roshi. I thought he was cool. Uh, you know, other than they always like to attach the pervert role to that. I'm glad One Piece doesn't with Rayleigh. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know the full story. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he really is. But with Master Roshi and Jiraiya, they're like, oh, you know, we love the ladies kind of thing. It's like, all right, y'all need to chill with that. But I love that mentor role where they're like, you know, very, very respected based on, on, on what they know and what they can do and what they've done in the past. So anyway, so in, in One Piece... There is no Rayleigh card. Like, there's a few cards that don't exist yet, right? Like, we don't have a Gold D. Roger card. We don't have uh, Rayleigh. There's, there's quite a few. There's probably quite a few cards we don't have. But man, I, I was really hoping we'd get one by now by OP05. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna make my own card. And <laughs> who knows? Maybe if this video gets big enough, they'll see it over there and decide to make one too, or make like a Gold D. Roger arc or something. You, you never know, right? You never know. Uh, I know there. I, I, well, I should. I don't know for a fact, but it seems like they're following. It, it seemed like the first five sets kind of kind of traced Luffy's rise to Gear Five. Like notice how Gear Four, we got the the dress Rosa Gear Four Luffy, and in um, oh, in set five we're getting the Gear Five Luffy. I don't know. That might be coincidence. Who knows? This is just you know c conjecture <laughs> on my part. It's just speculation. But that that kind of seems like what they were trying to do. But, but okay, so, so for today's video, I just want to talk about building Rayleigh, just having some fun. And of course, you guys, y'all should tell me your build in the comment section below, because this is just going to be what I would prefer for Rayleigh, right? So if you guys are like, no, 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 it should be like this, by all means, do it in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys have to, have to say about Rayleigh, like what kind of card you think he should be. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Um, first and foremost, what type should he be? Of course, you know, we've got the young um, Rayleigh here and the old Rayleigh, right? we got the, the young man, old man version, prime Rayleigh versus, uh, you know, seen better days Rayleigh, <laughs> right? Uh, I, I think we should stick with the old version of Rayleigh. I'm going to say that right away because I kind of made that for these cards so you can kind of see where that's going. Now, yes, if they ever came up with like a previous arc, you know, where we go through the, the you know, the rocks pirates or whatever they're called and the, and the Goldie Roger you know, pirates, the Roger pirates, then, then sure, we can make a young version. But for the time being, where we are now in the, in the, the game, I think it only makes sense to make an older version of Rayleigh. And in that case, I don't think he should have a type that goes with any, with any specific group because he's kind of his own person, right? He kind of is like a mercenary. He's on his own. He does what he wants. He's a totally free spirit. So I think his type should be kind of like how Kuzan, the tin cost is, where he's former Navy. I think Rayleigh would have to be like former uh, Roger Pirates, something along those lines, or potentially um, Straw Hat Crew ally. Where, so in other words, or ally of the Straw Hat Crew, where he, you can't search for him with Nami, but he'd be an ally of that would be the idea. You guys say what y'all think there. That's probably the least relevant point. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, next up, this is the hardest one to answer in my opinion. What color would the card be? Like what color would, would Rayleigh fall under? 
in my mind, he's red, green, or blue. Like, like that's what just kind of makes sense in my head. And I have some example cards at the end of the at the end of this slide that I'll show you what what I think the card should be. Don't worry so much about the counter, the five cost, and the five K just yet, or even the strike attribute. That's that's down the line. We're, we're going to talk about that as well individually. As far as the color goes, though, okay, y'all know I play black cards, so I prefer it to be black. <laughs> that's just me. But I really, if I'm being unbiased, I think red, yellow, and blue would be the best fit for him. Red, for obvious reasons, I, you know, there's a lot of pirates in there. You got white beard pirates, straw hat pirates, things like that. Green has like the supernova idea and like the, I don't know why, but the, the land of Wano or Wano County, Wano country, whatever it is, that kind of has that vibe, that aesthetic for him. Even though I know he's supposed to be, a, what, what is it, a Sab Sabity uh, Archipelago or something like that. Again, if I'm wrong on anything, you guys just help me out in the comment section below. Uh, but this one, I'm really curious to see what you guys say, uh, what color he should be. <clears throat> we'll talk, when we get to the uh, the effect that we think he should have, that's when we'll talk about the flavor of the card, right? Because I do have something very specific in mind for that. But y'all bear with me, let's get through it. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I think he should be red, green, or blue. And it's hard to decide from there. Because his effect will deter, will be, you'll have to determine his effect by what color he is. So, all right, let's keep that in mind. We'll, 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 uh, we'll keep thinking about, about that as we go. The next big question is what cost should the card be? So I like him at five, like somewhere between four and six. Let me say that. I like the card in between four, maybe even four and seven. But uh, we kind of have to skip a step. We, we kind of have to skip a step here and talk about the flavor of the card. This is what's going through my mind. Whenever I think of Rayleigh, I think of the time he saved Zoro. Like, Zoro is about to get curb stomped by Kizaru, right? By, by Borsalino. So I feel like Rayleigh's card has to in some way be a counter to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So like in my mind, I like how this card has, you know, counter plus 2,000. So because he's saving something, right? He's a card that's gonna, you're going to be able to counter out of your hand to save one of your other cards or your leader. Right, that's that's kind of my thought process on the 2000 counter. And that, that's why these were all built this way. And at the same time, I can't have him, you know, we can't have Rayleigh be like a really small card unless it's something really strong like the two cost Garp, where it's a two cost 2K counter with 3000 power that has an extremely powerful Dawn times two effect where you attach to Dawn, he can KO stuff. That's not out of the realm of possibility, but something about it is I, 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 don't, I feel like I can't build Rayleigh under a five cost like I, I want more out of him you know what i mean i don't know i'm not saying he couldn't work under that but that's just a personal preference thing um and then we also have to consider the direction of the card from here if we're going to make it a lower cost card it has to have an extremely powerful effect otherwise we should make it a larger cost card like a a higher cost card in the seven eight nine ten range and and have something a little bit less effective but just consistent right um, but we'll get into the effects later. As far as the cost of the card goes, intuitively, because he's older, he's not, remember guys, we're not building prime Rayleigh. We're building old man mentor level Rayleigh. Like, <laughs> I don't want to say washed up because y'all know he's still jacked at like 75 years old, but y'all get what I'm saying. Like this, this uh, shadow of himself Rayleigh. So I want to put him at five. I really want to put him higher than that, but I feel like five is going to make the most sense for the direction that I build the card. But y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below how y'all would do it. Okay, next up is what attribute should should the card be? We know Rayleigh is an incredible swordsman, <clears throat> at least you know for the little bit you know you can read on it, and, and he, he typically has a sword in hand in like some of his earlier battles. But he's also a hockey master, right? He has observation hockey, armament hockey, conquers hockey, on lock. So that's why I changed him in this slide. Notice here I have him as a strike character, but I change him over to special. And honestly, I think it'd be kind of cool to have him as a wisdom card, but that, that's just me. I don't know. I, I just kind of like that personally. But as is, I think it makes the most sense to have him as a special attribute character. Slash would make sense as well, especially if we did a young version of Rayleigh. I think we'd go with Slash, right? Uh, whereas like special is kind of all encompassing and makes the most sense. Strike, not as much, though you could get away with it because Rayleigh is just that guy. He can just do it all. The only one that doesn't make sense is ranged, right? That That's not really his thing. Uh, not to say he couldn't do some shenanigans with range, just y'all know what I mean. 
uh, wisdom makes a lot of sense to me. Wisdom and special make the most sense to me, but slash and strike also c can work in my opinion. Uh, wh what do you guys think about that uh, for, for the for the attribute? Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to go with special. And, and from here, I do go with special. I just kind of stick to it. So, all right, so let's go from there. <clears throat> this one's not as relevant, right, as some of the others we talked about. Because So here's the main one. Here's the main thing is what kind of effect would you have on Rayleigh as a card? Again, old man Rayleigh, we're, when it comes to flavor, we're, we're thinking, or at least I'm thinking of, when he saves uh, uh, Zoro from Kizaru, from Borsalino. He comes in like light speed and kicks, he deflects the kick that's going to curb stomp Zoro into the next life. And it blows up like the side of the mountain or the, or the side of the forest, wherever they were, I can't remember. And then he battles with Kazaru, with, with Borsalino, and just goes toe to toe with him the entire time. So, like, part of me wants him to be a card that can, in some way, save your guys or protect your guys, right? Um, now, there is a card in Uda that can let's see i think i think if i just bring something i'm gonna have to bring something up over here to kind of walk through some cards with y'all y'all give me just a second let me bring it up just some ideas that i had for the cards okay i'm gonna uh go out of full screen mode here and bring this over let me make sure it's it's still recording on yeah okay so like one idea that i had was this with um Hang on, let me uh, blow this up full screen. There we go. So one idea I had was this, where like Uda comes in, she's a four cost 4K on play, return up to one red character card other than Uda with a cost of three or less from your trash to your hand. So I was thinking about flipping that. So in a, in, instead of it being three or less, it would be three or more. Because remember, this card would, notice this Uda, this is a four cost 4K with that ability. And the character that I'm trying to build is more along the lines of a five cost 5k those are like basically the stats and power that i wanted at and one thing we should have mentioned actually is when we're determining the cost of the card that will directly relate to what the power is does that make sense like vanilla card a one cost vanilla card is 3000 power and then it goes up 1000 all the way up so vanilla card cards go 3000 4000 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that's how their stats go, and they all have a 1,000 counter, not a 2,000 counter, right? So so it's kind of hard to justify. Let me find that uh, Uda card here. If this card is a 4 cost 4K and has no counter with that effect, we couldn't really justify running our, our version like that. Um, but if we switched it around, that's what I was going to say. If we swapped it around to make it where... Like, okay, instead of it being, you know, um, hang on, where, I got to bring it back up. Instead, instead of making it return up to one red character other than Uda that costs three or less from your trash your hand, make it a three or more. So that way you couldn't get back 2K counters and things like that, searchers. It would get, you wouldn't be able to break searchers, right? At, well, at least as easily. People always find a way. Y'all know that. Um, but yeah, it would be one cost more, 1,000 power more, but but the counter would be hard to justify unless we inverted this effect. Um, but this this is definitely one effect we would look at. Uh, another one would be, so Borsalino, you know, this is the card we're talking about that, that I'd want him to kind of directly counter, or not counter, but at least be able to match. This is a four cost, 5,000 power, 1,000 counter that has plus 1,000 cannot be KO'd by effects and blocker. So I, I kind of like that. And a way for us to get into that would be like maybe some way to give the character rush so that he can attack into Borsalino, right? Maybe a Dawn times one, you know, at 5,000 power and give him rush if your opponent has a blocker on their side of the board. You know, something along those lines, right? Uh, that, that's kind of what's going through my head when uh, coming up with a flavor for this card. Um, and then the other thing would be uh, something along the lines of Trafalgar Law. It would be something like this. Like a way to protect your characters where, okay, you've got this blocker guy here and have where he can return one of your characters to your hand and then not the extra effect, not the, and then play this card. No, no, no. Just return a card that costs three or more to your hand. Something along those lines where, again, you won't be able to break searchers. You would just return your powerful characters to be used later. 
and at the cost of using a 5 cost 5k on the board that has a 2,000 counter. I don't know, something along those lines. Again, this is just to match the flavor of the card. Just to match the flavor of the card. Okay, and then last but not least, the other one that I was really thinking of was Jozu. Something along these, like I was saying, to, to battle Borsalino, maybe this card should be a 5 cost 5k 2,000 power with Dawn times 1. If your opponent has a blocker, give discard, you know, uh, Rush. Something along those lines. You know, not exactly that. You know, guys, don't butcher me and say, oh, that'd be broken. I'm just ad-libbing. I'm just, you know, brainstorming. You guys help me make it even better. Uh, or not even better, but more balanced, okay? All right. So, let's go ahead and go back to this. So, we need to think about what kind of resilience would he have? You know, resilience being like, oh, cannot be KO'd by card effects like Fukuro and Borsalino. Would he be removal instead? Like, do we want to go resilience with him? Do it, would it be removal where you can KO, bounce him to hand, life bounce, bottom deck him? Would he do cost reduction or power reduction? Again, a lot of this will depend what color he would be, right? Would he have an on play and activate main when attacking slash on block? Would he be a blocker? Would he be double attack? Would he be rush? Would we just make it vanilla? Because that's another card I should have actually uh, mentioned. Let me let me bring that card up real quick. And, um, you know, because I think he should be very similar to Garp. That That's kind of what I'm trying to say is, is I put him very close to Garp's power level because I think they're also both the same age. So, like, this is Vanilla Garp, right? 5 cost, 7,000 power striker, 1,000 power counter, Vanilla. So, I don't think it would be that crazy even to just make Rayleigh into a 5 cost, 5,000 power, 2,000 counter. Vanilla. Just straight up Vanilla. But but I do think, I don't know, you know, you're giving up 1,000 power for a 1,000 counter. Or, excuse me, you're giving up 2,000 power for, a 1, 000, for an extra 1,000 counter. So, I don't know. I, I think that would definitely be fair, if not a little bit understated. Because there's also, like, just to put things in perspective for those who don't know, like, every card by heart, because trust me, I don't either. I think it's spelled Virgo. Yeah, here we go. Like, this is a good example of a 5 cost, 5,000 power, 2,000 counter that also has an effect. You know, so it's not exactly broken or anything, because this card's not even used. <laughs> you know what I mean? Relatively, it's not used. There are some decks that run it, I'm sure, but not really. And, and then you get to, like, this is the vanilla one we were just talking about. 5 cost, 7,000 power, 1,000 counter. Well... It seems like you can take 1,000 power away, away from it to give it another additional counter, and then another 1,000 power you could take away from it to give it an effect. So I just I don't think it'd be that crazy to do what I was saying with making Rayleigh a 5 cost, 5,000 power, 2,000 counter like Virgo, but with an effect that's appropriate. Even just blocker keyword, right? Or just uh, rush keyword under a certain clause, under a certain circumstance like Jozu. Uh, but yeah, you guys say what y'all think. Uh, or, or do we go no counter? Like, that was the other thing. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm just trying to make this card very versatile and non-committal, sort of, because Rayleigh is that, right? Rayleigh's like, yeah, I'm just going to help out whoever, you know, whoever I think's right. It's the Straw Hat crew, so I'm just going to help them out when I can, but I'm not going to, like, go on a journey with them. I'll train them, I'll help them, but I'm not going on a journey with them kind of thing, right? Which which still is kind of going on a journey with them in the long run. Y'all know what I mean. Uh, not, not trying to get too technical. But yeah, and, and, and another question, should he have a trigger? So that's the last thing I have on here. Let me pull up the screen again, is trigger. Maybe, maybe you make him a yellow card. Who knows, right? Maybe maybe you make him purple and you give him a Dawn minus one effect. You know, there, there's a lot of different options. Uh, so, okay, so last but not least here, I'm going to go over some of the options, some of the cards that I came up with. Y'all be nice, don't be, you know, like I said, just be like, hey, I think that'd be a little too strong if you think it's too strong. You know, y'all be cool with me. Okay, so these are the three options that first popped into my mind. The first one, some of these I've said, right? Five costs, 5,000 power, 2,000 counter, just blocker. That's it. And, and and just to put that into perspective, let's actually do that, right? Let's let's look at cards that actually exist and see if that's uh, too broken. So so watch this. We'll just search by uh, cost, five. Let's, let's stick to five cost. Um, and let's do, actually, who cares about the power? We just want blocker. Uh, let's see if it, if, if it lets me do it like this. Okay. All right, so here's some blockers. So typically, you're gonna find a blocker like this. Hina, five cost, 6,000 power, 1,000 counter, with blocker and an on-block effect. So in other words, I'm I'm saying we should lose the effect just for minus one thousand and one minus 1,000 power to get plus 1,000 counter. So, and that is, by the way, that is the average blockers, uh, five cost blocker, is a five cost, 6K, 1K counter with blocker and an effect. 
uh, Diamante, five call, six K, one K blocker. <laughs> it's just five, six, one blocker, five, six, one blocker, five, six, one. You see it. It's all, it's all here. It, it's always the same. It's always a five call, six K, one K blocker that has a relevant effect. So in other words, what, what I'm saying is how crazy would it be really to add blocker to that, right? Uh, the next thing would be this one, this blue one here in the middle. Just a super high utility card, five cost, 5,000 power with a 2K counter, on play, draw a card. That's it, just draw a card. And, and this, you know, Kuzan is, a, is what comes to my mind here. It's a four cost, 5K with no counter, but it has draw one card and an effect. So it's one cost less for the same power, has an additional effect instead of having the counters. So I don't know, I, I think I think this one could work, or even maybe draw one, trash one, if they really think this would be unfair. I personally don't think it would be, but I, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. And, and let's even, there is a card that's coming out OP04 for blue. Hang on, one second, blue, get rid of blocker. And I think it's a, I think it's a seven cost. It's uh, let me see. Yeah, this guy right here. So this would be okay. <laughs> well, we can't read Japanese. It's it's draw, it's on play draw one card. Do y'all see that? It's on play draw one card, and this is it. This is a seven cost eight K with plus one thousand counter that draws a card. So I guess what I'm saying is, if we reduce the cost by two and reduce the power by three three thousand, we get the same exact effect, but we'll go up one thousand counter. So again, I try to make these cards as balanced as possible. I'm not trying to break it. I'm not trying to troll anybody. It's just cards I think would, would, would make sense. And then last but not least, the red version. This one is kind of similar to what I was saying earlier, where, okay, you got a 5 cost 5k 2000 counter. So 2k counter typically in hand, right? But on play, you may return one of your cost 3 or higher characters to your hand. This character gains rush. This one might be the the strongest one out of all out of all three of these, but I do think it could be balanced. Like maybe um like I said, make make it double conditional, where okay, return one of your cost three or higher characters to your hand. Um. Or wait, hang on. How would you word it? If your opponent has a blocker, you may return one of your cost three or higher characters to your hand. This character gains rush. Something along those lines. And these are just three ideas that I had real quick that I came up with because I just want to build a Rayleigh card, like I said. <laughs> so, so yeah, anyway, so, so that's about it. That's the last slide there. Um, by all means, you guys tell me what y'all think, what, what kind of card y'all would like to see next. You know, maybe, is there like a leader you want to build that we, that we could talk about on the channel? Is there like a, 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 spe a specific character you'd want to build, like maybe Goldie Roger for the next video? I just chose Rayleigh because he's my favorite character. Uh, truly, he's just he's a character I think is just so awesome and I just I just I love that mentor role in in the um, in anime and in uh, in any story not even just anime So yeah, I, I won't ramble for, on for too much longer guys uh, You guys tell me what you think. I hope you all enjoyed the video as usual Please like and subscribe if I miss anything. Please tell me Please tell me what y'all thought of the cards that I came up with back here <laughs> Are they too crazy or are they underpowered or what maybe maybe they're balanced? I don't know you guys tell me. And uh, please don't be afraid to share your ideas for cards down there too. Like, oh, I think Rayleigh should be this, 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 and this. You know, or, or I think you should do this leader next or this character next. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to leave you all alone. I appreciate you all as always. And uh, until next time, guys. Peace.